Right, so hello viewers and welcome back to our Let's Play of Star Ruler 2. I guess this will be episode 5 now, and we've recently finished building up our carrier air group leader uh, ship design here. And this is just a massive uh, space vessel that leads our fleet here. So, I mean, moving forwards, it would definitely be a, a nice opportunity to, well, test this um, giant ship on something. So with that said, I think we'll try to do that in just a few uh, short seconds here. I'm going to try to colonize a few planets again, just because we, if we want to build more of these things, we of course have to pay for their uh, construction costs. And with that said, I'm trying to find a nice dense area filled with uh, baddies to send this thing to. So, anyhow, I've uh, I've already picked off one of these neutral groups of ships, if you will, for lack of a better term. And, well, I've noticed a few things about the ship that uh, we might want to change. So, anyhow, I'll show you guys uh, what those things being. Most of it is just the yeah the speed of the ship isn't really fast it's um it's kind of over underwhelming actually coming from that episode or coming from that burst if you will of hyperdrive i i guess energy and then the ship just sort of slow boats it towards the enemy so <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, that's definitely one big change that we might want to make onto the ship, but I've got to say, I mean, for the amount of damage it dishes out, I guess, collectively, it's, um, it's definitely a wrecking ball that is, uh definitely something that people should try to avoid. So, I mean, moving forwards from here, um, colonization is still a very, very big uh, priority in the uh, this area in, of the universe. We want to beg a few more resources just so that we can switch these planets into, or, um, into either upkeep-producing ones or uh, labor-producing planets to sustain our big military uh, group here. So anyhow, moving forwards from there, I mean, as you can see, the the, uh, the political game is playing further. And to explain this briefly, what is happening here is that every 15 seconds or so, every time, every 26 seconds, evidently, it changes per game, depending on how many people you have. Um, every every few seconds, this thing will play down, and what will effectively happen is that I believe there will always be nine of these cards on the table. And the, this panel here is the, the amount of cards that you can buy from. Uh, what should happen in theory is that every single one of these cards enter the, uh, the playing field here with an associated cost with them. Every cycle, those cards will move down the line by one, and the price will decrease by one point in influence. Afterwards, we can buy one of these things, and then we can gain a benefit from it. So for example, I just bought the Profiteering card, which gives us some immediate uh, some immediate uh, amount of money as we go along and it's in general I mean in the multiplayer scene it's uh, I guess a form to give yourself an advantage and it's really just seeing how far you can get your desired card down towards the most uh, efficient cost without anybody else of course snatching it up from you so that is uh, yeah that's just that currently as you can see the carrier group is uh, it's oddly enough like cost efficient for each and every single one of these jumps it's just very very slow in its uh yeah in its time actually we're currently playing on times one speed so maybe that's that but i mean uh, uh, either way i don't expect our ships to arrive there anytime soon so yeah, changing up that engine is uh, probably one of the things that we should do here and switch uh, switch it out for something perhaps a little bit bigger. But currently, I've got to say that its, uh, it's combat potential is definitely there, and I think it does work uh, pretty well in that respect. So I'm going to get this other neutronium-producing planet up and running here just because that is going to be quite the useful thing here in, in, our, in our fight. No, I think I just imported some drugs to the planet. Oddly enough, though, it doesn't look like it's changing from a tier 1 to a tier 2. So, yeah, I don't really know what a, what is up with that, but we need to find some more tier 1s. Our, our, our other fleet has evidently explored all the way over there. So at least now we know what is at the very tip of the galactic, uh, rather, our galactic spirals' is, um, end there. Anyhow, uh, we'll gradually colonize those locations. Evidently, we're already doing that at a decent rate. And I'll just pick off a few more of these planets, get these to level 1. And let's see, there's a few more here. Some titanium, some of the other crap. That is two more. Crop food and water, food and water. There's one more. 
two food. I guess I need two water. And I'll have two more of these apple bits to use to tear up my planets. I don't know. It looks like we uh, we missed a fight. Yeah, because they got uh, wrecked over there. Right, well, it looks like this is actually a pretty large fleet over here. Let's see what we can do about these guys with our uh, galactic-sized fleet now. Ass assuming that we can arrive in time is the main thing in this uh, regards. So, there we go. Now we're making that connection. Oh, it's, uh, they're fighting, they're duking it out with these guys over here. Definitely a lot of those uh, beam ships flying about. But apart from that, everything else looks uh, pretty glorious for the combat. Right, so that's another one of these small fleets gone. And when you look at that, just concentrated beams on that one ship. From the looks of it, it actually isn't taking that much damage. And there's also the, uh, yeah, there's also a sense of scale in that regards. You have to sort of uh, build your ships relative to other groups, in the sense that if your ships are too big, their missiles and stuff won't actually hit full on, and thus won't do uh, full amounts of damage onto another uh, ship there. But anyhow, as you can see, I mean, the ships, or our fleets over here, are pretty deadly just on its own, though they might be a tad slower than, uh, say, the, or say, perhaps for what I, for what we want there. So, from the looks of it, somebody's actually trying to fire off a card on the diplomatic front onto our empire here. From the looks of it, somebody's trying to investigate us, and this is a very, very bad thing. What's happening here is that if this bill passes, uh, everybody else will be able to gain complete vision over us. So with that said, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to fire off this, uh, let's see, I think I'll fire off this rhetoric card. I'm going to play it in opposition. So that's going to add a, a number to uh, what we have over here. And in general, hopefully we can keep that bill from passing there. Um, going back into the game, I mean, yeah, one thing that we want, that we might want to do is, of course, improve upon those ship designs so that we can perhaps get something with a bit faster uh, FTL travel is one big thing. Um, the second thing is we might want to... I'm going to pause the game here. I have a lot of labor producing um, places. I'm going to export all of this titanium to one planet, and I'm going to get this uh, planet to hopefully export that labor in the future to our our uh, space dock, if you will, later on. But as I was saying, yeah, one of the things that we might want to do is just change some of our ship designs here so that they'll be better in FTL travel and to an extent, of course, then better at uh, really bringing the fight to the enemy. But that is, of course, just stuff for the future. Currently, though, colonization is king. And evidently, I mean, we have enough money to practically sustain a wide just field of this stuff. So let's do exactly that, just that, colonize this entire uh, expanse here. So we'll grab all of these planets, we can also grab a few of these specialty resources, I guess. Um, again, I want to get a few more tier 2 and tier 3 worlds going, is the thing. And from the looks of it, there is yeah, a nice source of thorium over here. I think the FTL crystals, and this stuff is king for now, though. So auto-import, auto-import, and then we can just queue import of textiles. We actually have a whole ton of these textiles. But yeah, that'll set up two more of those planets. And that should be that. 
Yeah, currently this fleet is still king. The ships will automatically repair themselves, but one of the other things that we might want to do on these capital ships is to um, equip them with some better armor is another thing that we might want to do. Uh, going forth from there, how is this investigate bill going? It is still going on its way here. So what I think I'll do um, just for now is that I'll buy a few more of these cards. Namely, this pack of uh, two negotiate cards. Namely, because I would really rather if um, people didn't or aren't able to view what I do here. So, I mean, as you can see, some of these ones are cards that can be uh, used just solely to add opposition or support. Some of these ones are uh, more specific. For, for whatever reason, we seem to have a whole bunch of leverage upon other people. So, um, in the event that these no nations try to play some sort of um, card against us, we could, in theory, use those against them. But um, currently, they aren't uh, really there. We also have that... Um, call out card and that's one thing that we can use to well they do exactly pretty much what it says call out a nation so that they will have to support us and yeah in general you can just get a uh, those cards from a whole bunch of different sources currently though we can do some more uh, exciting stuff there's a few of these debris fields lying around over the galaxy and we can actually use those to our advantage we can um, collect the stuff from them and we can play this little runes minigame where we have to choose between decisions and the game will just take those into account and give us some reward or at least hopefully some reward in the um, in the process now, would you look at that? That stream of colonization ships just grows every single time. So many worlds are being colonized right, right there. And in general, I mean, yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely a lot of those very neat things inside the game there. Speaking of which, we might also want to build, I believe it's, um, it's called a trade center. Wow. That is our level 4 planet in the works. It still doesn't consider itself a level 4 planet for whatever reason, but that planet is entirely just dominated by cities, factories, a few markets, and amongst other things there. Absolutely wonderful little planet. And it's still producing ships for other people. Anyhow, uh, one of the things that we might want to do is build a trade core as a planet, or as a thing. Evidently, this will grant uh, yeah happiness to a whole bunch of different uh, planets going off of it. Hmm. One of the things that I also want to do is that I want to build a few mining posts here and there, so I'm seeing where I can do that from. Oh, from the looks of it, we can actually equip these uh, outposts with different modules, depending on which resources or which pressures are flowing into them. So we could actually build a trade post from this... Uh, onto our construction core here. It'll generate some money per budget cycle. Friendly controlling planets also gain something from it too. Uh, you know what, we can do that. So we'll use one of those affinities for it. We could make it an indicator type of thing. Let's see, asteroids within the system is of its orbital will have mining bases built upon them. This one is also something that can be, used, can be pretty useful. So let's see. Hmm. Yeah, so they definitely have quite a few of those interesting things. I was wondering about how we uh, actually mine out of those asteroids as well. Because I see them a lot, I was under the impression that you needed a construction core to mine through them. But it might have been a different uh, system there. So yeah, what we can do here is that we can move something to scan the debris field. With these asteroids, they, they, they often have temporary resources like this thing. Um, <laughs> And yeah, we're not actually the, that economic materials one isn't a temporary one. That one actually just increases the maximum population by two. Um, but some of these, usually some of these asteroids will possess something that just simply grants a like, like I think a six minute bonus is what they typically are um, of just stuff. So for example, over here we have volatile materials gives an arsenal a short ranged weaponry that can be used wherever, can be only exported once, it locks its destination, can no longer be changed, only takes down while in combat and it'll be used up in three minutes of uh, combat is what I think it says there. So yeah, there's um, there's a lot of those buildings lying about as well. They're fairly neat, but you need to use them, of course, in their respective uh, situations. Right, and I think that action is over, so that's good. These people should be just scanning this thing. We can pull it up, and as soon as that scans, that should give us a few options to mess around with. Now, going forwards from here, I would really like it if we were to, if we were able to build those mining as places. 
Because yeah, from the looks of it, it does indeed involve using one of these construction cores. But I want to see what uh, what we do with them to get them running. I mean, do I if I grab the construction core and mouse over one of these asteroids, can we? Oh, hey, we actually can. We can just right-click over things to build onto them. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, let's see. Where is where is that exploration fleet? They, yeah, there they there they go. So we found something here. We uh, locating the source of the signal. You find a wreck. You find an ancient uh, warship wreck on the debris field. The ship appears heavily damaged, but perhaps we can find something useful aboard. We can scrap it for some money, or we can gain some research off of it. So I guess we'll gain some research off of it like that. And again, from the looks of it, we're really taken up on the military stuff, so I'll switch over the uh, the research to something else there. And uh, yeah, it really is just kind of a neat thing like that. We also have a few different perks we can buy here using our different types of labor and all. We can do either um, low, low gravity smelting, which add plus four to our factories, making them a little bit more um, economical. Although we're currently depending on the uh, the AI built factories, so that's not really that big of a deal. Or uh, something that increases armor health. That actually sounds pretty useful. So we'll research that. That should lock the thing in after some time and get that rolling. And from the looks of it, um, I think we... Hmm. Oh, actually, it looks like shields are indeed inside the game so far. We just have to unlock them with Field Hyperdynamics 2 here. In that case, I think I will actually spend the time to do another level of research in um, Military Science, so hopefully we can get that going. Hmm. And from the looks of it, over time, our fleet here has been scaling in uh, strength as those research uh, technologies have been unlocked, so that's not bad as well. Right, so we can do we can test this fleet on a few more of these enemy forces here. But man, would you look at that? Our fleet's, uh, yeah, our forces' influences just go all over the galaxy here now. It takes a nice banana-shaped curve and makes it into just one giant dividing line right here. Checking out the diplomacy here. I think we have we have 21k in terms of power. And by far, I think, yeah, we've already practically won in the sense that we gained control of uh, the dominant stage of the world here over all of the other alien races. So with that said, I think we'll leave this episode here, and when we return, we will see what we can do about planning a, uh, say, a invasion of another race's uh, little, I guess, places here. So with that said, I think I'll see you guys next time, and you know, be sure to like and subscribe as always, and once we return, we will do exactly that, that just that, and launch a uh, invasion plan of sorts.